I'm Celia Moriarty and I want to share with you how you can save hundreds in purchasing paint colours. If you're an artist, you already know that when you have a tube of paint, it rarely is the exact colour you're looking for. There's just a whole lot of different blues and greens here now and it's not going to be exactly the one. But actually I can use this paint colour to get all kinds of different colours. So I want to show you how you can feel confident in creating the colours that you see and mix them from just a few paints. So I will demonstrate now using six different colours plus black and white to create palettes for blues and greens, pinks and purples and golds and browns. So get out your art journal and your six colours and create these palettes that you will be able to refer back to and use for years while you're creating beautiful paintings. First, let's take a look at our blue-green palette. I'm using Winsor & Newton Professional Acrylics because I find they hold their colour fastness, wet or dry, better than any other paint I've used. So I've got a Titanium White, Mars Black, ultramarine blue and two yellows, cad yellow medium and cad yellow light. And I'm using just a plate so that I catch the water uh, because when we mix with acrylics, we get quite a bit of water and I don't want that sliding off. I'm starting with just black and white, becoming familiar with that tonal range in the monotone range there of black to white is really important. And I use it a lot in my uh, under paintings in the paintings that I create but in this case we're going on to ultramarine blue and just adding white so we see what kind of changes happen and I know exactly where to look when I'm making different blues what happens in that range of white as I change the the chroma of that ultramarine blue now I'm going to mix them together the blue black and the white and it's a really beautiful, interesting uh, blue grays that I make. A Payne's gray is what you'd find in there mixed with the white. Now let's look at our cad yellow medium. After I've labeled everything I'm doing, because labeling when you're making a reference is vital. So that cad yellow medium, I'll add in some white before mixing it with the blue. And when I mix it with the blue, you'll see I get a really clean green. And uh, a, a lot of uh, natives and green leaves are going to be in this cr uh, clean kind of green. But now if I put some white in and mute that down, uh, you see a real change in that tone of what we've got there. And I'm going to vary that even more by putting in the black. And once we start adding in the black, you're really seeing all the changes we've got in a gum leaf because we get those blue-green variations. And I could go on making those a little bit bluer, a little bit greener, but basically I just want to see where those variations come from and I know how to start mixing when I'm doing a painting. Now, if we look at the cad yellow light, all I'm doing is adding some white first. So we see the variation and you'll see by the time I get to the end, that's a typical color for a highlight where the sun hits what uh, the thing that we're painting. So we find that with the cad yellow light. Once I mix blue into this, it's a different green. This green pops. It's much more like a lush rainforest plants. And uh, once we add the white to it, and we're looking at these sort of teal colors where the paint we might otherwise use would be a thallow blue, thallow green. This is where the combination comes from. And once we add in some black to that, you can see a real shift in the colors that we're creating. So uh, this is, you see this in modern furnishings all the time in this line, this is very current and in. So 
just by blue with two different yellows and our black and white, you can see that you can make really different ranges uh, of color. And you can see I've just got some plants here that I've picked in the morning so that I can try and match up. How can I make that color? What combinations would I use? And I can find each of those there. Look at the, here's a Maya lemon that would be in the cad yellow medium. But if I had a Eureka lemon, that would be over in the lemony <laughs> cad yellow light. Now, let's move on to looking at your pink purple palette. So quite a different range. And again, I'm going to be using uh, black and white. And uh, this time I'm going to be using the same blue, but I will use three different reds. Cad Red Medium, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, and Quinacridone Violet. And we'll see what kind of combinations we can get by mixing, again, this is a simple beginning, but uh, we can get a lot from it. And I'm marking up the palette to help me remember before starting with the Cad Red Medium and White. So we really become familiar with the type of pinks that we get there before adding in the blue. And it's not the purple you might think, it's a rusty kind of purple, but still useful before muting it with the white. Then permanent alizarin crimson and beautiful pinky pinks there and a different kind of purple altogether before we mute it with the white. Once we use quinacridone violet, here you can see your party pinks. Barbie pink, the really popping pink. And again, when you put in the blue, now we really get the violety purples. And I'll again mute those down, see the shifts that happen when we get those purples with the white and start looking at what I picked today, walking around the streets uh, that matches in and I can make all of these different colors from nature just from this simple combination. And uh, there's so many things you could do and you can keep making variations of those until the cows come home. But I want to actually uh, see what I've got right there. So now let's have a look at your gold palette. So this is very earthy colors, um, which might actually be in the soil or the ground, but again, could be in flowers, could be in leaves, could be in any different kind of variation. But I'm just going to go very simple this time and use the black and white and just one yellow and one red, cad yellow medium and the cad red medium to see what we can make in terms of a range of orangey goldy brown colors. So I'll begin again by just mixing the cad red medium with white. So we see what kind of uh, more, well, I guess so many kind of pinks and then the oranges we get by adding in the yellow. Now, We'll mute it down again with the white and it, then it start really looking like apricotty colors before putting in some black and we get a whole variation of browns and then putting the white into that even more. And again, so real shifts, but you've got to know how to make these combinations to not just end up with mud. So, it's important to understand and control what you're doing to use less colors and then you feel much more confident that you can create what you need to create. And when you go and uh, look at the things around you and the colors that you see, you know how to create them. You can see that I can make those autumnal colors there, all the colors there in that Banksia flower come from that tiny range rather than trying to use too many colors and confusing things. So I hope you enjoy making these colors and creating the colors that you see.